Hello and welcome back to the second episode of Marketing and 404's Crossing the Chasm mini-series. An episode which is dedicated to Mark Twain's now immortalised quote, There's lies, damn lies, then there's statistics. Because during this episode, I'm going to talk why numbers suck and why they often lead us down the garden path. And I get it. People are drawn to them because they're absolute. One is one, two is two, three is three, blah, 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 blah. No one ever got fired for basing a decision on data. The trouble is, in most cases, certainly in the marketing world, these numbers that are there to represent us, humans. A race that, given the choice to name a new underwater ship, voted for Boaty McBoatface by an absolute country mile. A decision I think we would all we can all agree with stand by again a hundred percent. And although I could probably cut this podcast many ways, for the purposes of brevity, I'm going to focus on two separate strands, life cycle management and performance metrics. The first feeds into the former, but I'll go into this in more detail later. Um, but first, life cycle management. So here's a little scene setter to get things going. Uh, You've just secured a chunk of money for some nice looking venture capitalists. Some money you need to help grow your business and mature your business operations, taking it to the next level. You've been pretty successful up until this point. You just need to sell more. Enter a new salesperson. But now you've got a new salesperson, you need more leads. So you stick to the tried and tested tactics that worked for the early adopters and innovators of this world. You scale up your events, your product adverts, your influencer marketing, the lot. But nothing seems to work. With less people now sticking their hand up for demos, you roll out the 2014 marketing playbook with a red carpet. There's forms and ebooks everywhere. And now you've got marketing hitting their numbers, but sales ain't happy. It's like getting blood from a stone. Uh, So, to try and help them out, marketing now focuses their attention on short-term bottom-of-funnel initiatives. Enter external telesales, more events, some hideously crass automated email follow-ups. All your attention is now focused on that 3% of your total addressable market that is looking to make a purchase decision. However... Because there's no prior relationship or engagements with these, uh, this ICP, win rates are low and your customer acquisition costs are high. So you're spending more than ever on events and sales. Events and sales? Sales and marketing. But annual recurring revenue is beginning to plateau. Your CRM is full of crap. And those lovely venture capitalists, well, they ain't playing so nice anymore. Does that sound familiar? Hopefully hopefully it resonates at some levels, um, but hopefully we can all agree it's a vicious cycle that's notoriously hard to escape. And this short-term mindset, one obsessed by ROI, feeds into how marketing monitor success in in their day-to-day lives. Um, And that brings us on to the next strand, performance metrics. So you're embroiled in this culture of ROI, Um, And we often find ourselves trapped under a deluge of multi-channel attribution reports and channel statistics that, although riddled with numbers, just don't seem to add up. But the numbers tell us we need to up our spend on Google Ads, so that's probably what we'll do. But this is where we need to let common sense prevail. When it comes to marketing, the sum of the whole really is greater than the sum of the individual parts. Let's take a look at our tried and trusted friend display ads. They're super cheap. Targeting can be a bit ropey, uh, but they're good for helping keep your brand front of mind. Um, But when we examine the conversions, they're crap. Uh, So we get rid of them and we pump more money into Google ads. But the ratios don't don't, don't add up. Google, Google ad conversions stay flat. Perhaps... Thinking out loud, though, out loud, those display ads were helping keep your brand front of mind, subtly building trust so when a search advert did come up, 
uh, ICP was more likely to engage. You don't, you, you, you just don't really know. Or let's take multi-channel attribution modeling um, as another example. Who was the last tech vendor you bought from? And when was the very first time you engaged with that brand? Years ago, maybe a few months. Either way, how many times have you cleared your browsing history since then? Was it even digital? Was it a nice external piece that we have no la no analytical control over? When I purchased HubSpot, I was engaging with their content, liking their social posts years before I purchased. The one thing that changed was I then had a compelling reason to purchase. Um, so it, it's, it's just crazy to think we can uh, create a true digital picture of what's going on. Instead, focus our attention on the content we're pushing. Build a brand people want to do business with. Inbound pipe is notoriously more sticky and much more likely to hang around, increasing your lifetime value tenfold. People are naturally more invested when it's their idea. And the best way to do this, like I said, is building a brand people want to do business with. Focus on engagement rather than ROI, and the rest will take care of itself. If you don't believe me, go follow a guy called Chris Chris Walker. Um, I get teased for fangirling over Chris, but he's he's brilliant. Um, I've learned a ton just following him on LinkedIn the past year. Um, only today he published a cracking little post on why marketing teams need to have conversations at the business level rather than the marketing one. And it just makes sense. Um, uh, anyway, the brand, building the brand. Um, th think of a B2B SaaS provider you wished your company could emulate. Who was it? Drift, ServiceNow, Splunk, HubSpot? Whoever it was, after this podcast, go check out their website. And I, and I mean, really, look. Brush aside the cool animations and the enviable branding. Think, what language do they use? What's their value proposition? What sorts of content do they produce? The common thread that ties these organizations together is the customer. The customer is at the heart of everything they do. It sounds disgustingly simple, but it's true. No amount of SEO wizardry, growth hacks, or PPC can sidestep a poor message with a short-sighted, shited, <laughs> sort short-sighted CTA. Uh, so let's have a look at one of my favourites, Drift. Um, and just to harp back to that HubSpot example, I don't currently own Drift. We, it's not a Mart It's not part of our Martech portfolio at the minute. But when I have scope to implement them, they're the company I'm going to go to. Uh, but am I going to show up in a cheesy ROI report? No, I'm not. Anyway, sidetrack. The, the, the blog, the blog. The blog uh, Drift uh, published just last week. It's titled, I'm an event marketer. Here's how I'm pivoting in this new world. Wow. Not only does it sound like it's got some cool BuzzFeed vibe, but it's got purpose. It hones in on a key persona rather crassly, but... It's not trying to be all things to all people. It's super relevant and it's got meaning. How do you measure ROI on that? You can't, not fully. However, those that read it will leave with a favorable impression of drift. They've helped them. And they'll most likely have had a few new ideas planted in their head. But what's the alternative? The blog could easily have been titled five new features to make it easier to manage events or introducing our latest event management features, Some, something like that. But the differences are subtle, but huge. In the second two examples, it's about the company, not the ICP. And I know which of those I would rather read and click on. Uh, I can see we're just running out of time. So to wrap this up, before I do, I wanted to highlight another, uh, another of Chris's top tips. Inbound does not equal SEO. If your content has meaning and is genuinely helpful, get it out there. They don't need to sign up for a demo straight away for it to be deemed a success. If my ramblings have made sense, then go check out my profile. I recently published an article on how chatbots can help B2B tech organizations cross the chasm, where I go into a little bit more detail on what was discussed today. In our next episode, we'll expand on some points briefly discussed in this podcast and talk how tech companies can build a communication strategy that will resonate with their ICP. I'm Joe Edwards. Thanks for listening. See you soon.